Ron Kyer is one of the leading business development and turnaround specialists in America and has helped top organizations generate over half a billion dollars in increased sales revenue. That's why CEOs have lined up to endorse his newest book, Lead, Sell, or Get Out of the Way. What is a corporate governance officer? A chief governance officer, CGO, was meant to do something like we did with the CIO, chief information officer. 20 years ago, you know, when technology became a big part of a corporation, they decided to put it into the C-suite and have somebody responsible at the executive level. Today, governance is an issue. It's an issue that's holding companies accountable for what they're doing, and I believe that it also has to be in the C-suite, so we called it a CGO. And why wouldn't a chief financial officer take on those duties? Well, a chief financial officer is really for the finances of an organization. We're going beyond just finances. We're talking about best practices. We're talking about all aspects of governance that a board of directors has to worry about, and so does a corporation's reputation. Although it's true, isn't it, that most of the problems, the allegations, the scandals lately have been accounting-related scandals. They've been CFO-type scandals. They've been CFO-type scandals, but in many cases, the numbers to auditors looked good. That's why they weren't exactly caught. It's not just a question of quote-unquote numbers. It's a question of best practices and are things being done the proper way. Now, if people want to deceive investors, th this role, this person isn't going to stop them. I mean, let, let me just give you, you know, if Dennis Kozlowski uh, sent empty boxes so that he could evade taxes on his art, if uh, Martha Stewart sold M-Clone after hearing about a secret FDA uh, uh, announcement in advance, if people are doing things and, and notice I'm stating that very conditionally, but if people are doing things that they know to be improper, this person won't stop them, right? Yes, let's face it, fraud is fraud. If anybody wants to be a bad apple, they're going to be it. And if there's a rule that's holding them back, they'll find their way around it. This is not what it's really meant for, the people that are going to be bad apples. It's really meant for the good guy. If you look at most corporations out there, most of them are doing very well, and they're doing it by the books. Problem is they're all put into the same basket as being tainted and saying, because of these few bad apples, I can't trust you also. So what we're looking at as the CGO is for good organizations to do something proactively to the investors and say, look, we understand you have concerns, so we're going to put it all out in the open to it. Everything, our accounting, our best practices, we'll even hire an independent person to be a CGO and let him make sure that we are following best practices. Okay, so it's an independent, what do you mean by independent person? Well, Wouldn't they report to the same CEO or not the board? Or to well, whom? not necessarily. The board is an independent directorship most, for mostly. What you want to do is you want to bring an independent person outside the organization to be the CGO, not someone who's handpicked by the CEO, part of a political team, if you will, or whatever. Someone who has no strings attached. Someone who has no ax to grind, if you will. A pure, independent individual. So that person would report to the board? Yes. And your point is that you could help companies find this person, or you're suggesting that they do a search for these type of types of people and they would avoid problems if they did? We suggest that they develop the office of the CGO, Chief Governance Officer, that they develop a template of what the criteria for this individual would be. We can assist them with that. But that the individual be an independent coming from outside the corporation, versed in the accounting rules, SEC guidelines, and all corporate governance issues, and also versed in the board of directors' you know, direction for the organization. And my guess is that you also would, would say that even companies that have nothing to hide, that have done everything right, would benefit in some ways from investors who just see that they're making this attempt. This, was, this is sort of proof of their sincerity, proof of their objectivity to bring in a third party, if you will. Absolutely. It's a proactive way to show investors, hey, we've got nothing to hide. We're willing to put it all out in the open. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Have companies been doing this? Yes, there are some. I really can't get into names at this particular time because of, you know, uh, confidentiality, but I do know of searches going on right now at board levels where they are trying to bring a CGO type uh, individual into the organization. Um, the other thing that we want to make sure is, is that, you know, this is not to be a, a watchdog for the CEO per se. This is not to be a pariah in the organization. It's really to be someone who's going to be instilling the confidence in the investors, but also in the employees. And someone who's going to sit there and say, governance is good, ethics are good. You know, it's about doing things right. But when we're doing it right, we still want to win the game. And that's fine. Now, up till now, there's been criticism because the auditing companies have been hired by the CEO, and that has been described by some as a conflict of interest, and some suggest the board should be doing the hiring of auditors. I if that's the case, how is the CGO different from an independent auditor who might be hired by a board? It's quite possible that the auditing function will come under the CGO office. 
Okay, so there, it's really part of the same umbrella. It would be uh, a name in the org chart of the auditor, CGO. Right, and it also would be at the highest levels of the organization giving governance the attention it really deserves at this time. Mm -hmm. um, do you think this kind of thing is likely? Have you, um, in other words, has this idea, when you've told it to people, and I guess you guys sent out a press release, yes. is that right? Has, has it been gathering attention and has it been responded to well? Absolutely. We have a, uh, an executive recruiter in Houston who's already pitching this idea to several of their clients and they're already taking on some active searches. Again, I can't really get into the names of these companies that are doing it, but it, yes, it is taking hold. The bottom line is, again, is that most CEOs have nothing to worry about. So th these are the individuals who, quite frankly, would be open to something like this. But by being open to it, uh, that this is the type of individual the CGO is going to serve. It's going to serve the good serving uh, executive who wants to show the investors we've got nothing to hide, here it is. For the bad apple, they may have a problem with it. But then again, you would expect that. Would this also be the case that if I'm a CEO or I'm on the board, either one, and I hire an accounting firm, and I hire PwC or Ernst & Young or someone, I would say to them, can you designate somebody who's my CGO? I would just ask for that from the auditor. I would put the CGO above the auditor, and I would have the board find the CGO. I would not ask for the accounting firm to find the CGO, because the CGO has got to be above that auditing function. It's got to look at the auditing function and best practices within that area, as well as best practices within all areas of the organization. Bottom line, if someone wants to hide, and I, I hate to keep harping on this, That's but okay. bottom line, if someone wants to hide some sort of suspicious behavior, my guess is it's not clear the CGO would find that. The CGO would, look, if someone wants to be a bad apple, if you will, and will go at great lengths to hide it, they're going to hide it. Would the CGO find it? There's a very good possibility it would. But what I'm concerned about mostly is for organizations that really want us to take a proactive step and make sure that then nothing that they do is called into question. If, you know, think about the PR aspects for a second. Most companies are doing it right, but if all of a sudden a press release goes out saying that this organization is being investigated for X, even though they're innocent, the fact that they're being investigated automatically puts some doubt into the way they operate, and it causes dra dramatic damaging results. So what you have to do is you have to prevent that. The CGO process is a step to help them do that. Think about an old wooden boat. Many times you put many layers of varnish onto that boat to protect it, add to the luster, make sure it's waterproof. The CGO is simply another layer on that boat. It's not going to add to the speed of the organization or to its ability to compete, but it's going to give that one extra layer, hopefully to build the confidence of the investors and employees in saying, hey, this is a structure that's running properly and is built right from the foundation on up.